Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of CTLN Opinion Plus. As you know, this is a space for the concerns and issues of the Latino community. This week we are talking about climate and the initiatives Connecticut is working to address it. Um, we are joined by Katie Dykes, Commissioner of the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Hi Katie, welcome back. Hi, great to be with you. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, last time you were here, we talked about energy efficiency, but this time uh, you guys have developed a, a newer program and, and it's a, it, it, from what I read correctly, it, it, it involves three states, correct? Right, so we are um, really excited that Connecticut is gonna be part of the what's called the Transportation Climate Initiative Program. We're working together with Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and also um, Washington DC to implement this pathbreaking program that will help to clean up our air uh, and reduce air pollution and reduce harmful greenhouse gas emissions from our transportation sector and drive over a billion dollars of investment in clean transportation solutions uh, for the citizens of Connecticut. I'm just really thrilled that we're going to be part of this. So what does clean energy transportation look like? Well, it looks like buses uh, that are um, driving through our uh, communities, providing for affordable transportation, um, but powered by electricity uh, so that they're clean and not spewing out diesel exhaust. It looks like um, investments in uh, or, uh, rebates that we can provide for people to purchase new and used electric vehicles. Um, there's really a lot of exciting uh, changes happening in uh, the electric vehicle space. Um, GM just announced that they're going to stop producing internal combustion engine vehicles by 2035. We see the price of electric vehicles coming down dramatically. Um, so that's going to be a really um, big transformation and Connecticut will be at the forefront of providing for those um, types of vehicles, clean vehicles uh, for citizens across our state. Uh, those are just two examples, but um, there's so much uh, that this can mean for rural communities, um, potentially providing support for more broadband access uh, so that people can um, telework uh, more effectively or dial into schools so that they don't have to get in their cars in their first place, building out more rail um, uh, access. But as the, one of the most exciting things about this program is that it recognizes that many of our communities, especially in urban areas, um, are disproportionately in, impacted by air pollution from our transportation sector with high asthma rates and other respiratory illness. And so about a third of the um, funding that we'll receive from this program, we're going to dedicate specifically to benefit um, communities that are overburdened by air pollution uh, to provide them with more access to transit and low cost um, uh, clean transportation op options, including expanding bike paths and trails and more walkable um, cities and uh, all those types of services that will help improve our air quality and help people get around more efficiently. And how, uh, how soon is this going to be achieved? What's the timetable? Are there any target points that you want to reach? Yeah, so uh, we are at a critical moment right now because in order to be part of this program, we'll need legislation. The General Assembly will need to provide for authorization for our department um, to move forward to put these regulations in place so that Connecticut can join uh, with the other New England states uh, in advancing this program. So Governor Lamont has introduced a bill um, that will enable Connecticut to take part in this program. And we're engaging in, in conversations with our uh, legislative counterparts to tell them about the benefits of this program, what it will mean in terms of transforming our air quality and our transportation system. Um, and we're hopeful that uh, we'll have legislative support for, for this important measure this year. But um, it's really a great opportunity to let people know what's at stake um, with the legislative session this year in, in being able to continue our leadership on climate change and reducing air pollution from transportation. Connecticut, um, from all the interviews and reporting that I've done, uh, seems like a state that really values and 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 really takes into account like the environment and what's going on in the world. Um, what is what is the, the goal for this year in terms of addressing climate and air quality in Connecticut? Mm -hmm. Well, the transportation sector is the biggest source of air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. About 40% of our greenhouse gas emissions come from the transportation sector. So that's why it, this is the most important goal that we have um, for continuing our leadership on addressing climate change 
is to get this program into place so that we can really start to um, invest in solutions that will reduce those emissions. Um, it's it's going to be transformative if we get the authorization for this program. And it's really important to let people know what that will mean for their day-to-day -day lives. Not just, you know, in terms of having access to cleaner buses, um, cleaner vehicles, but also fewer trips to the emergency room uh, for, you know, for families who have kids with asthma. Um, struggle with those those challenges. Um, people may not realize that, uh, you know, just how much our uh, pollution in our air contributes to those challenges that people feel in their day to day. And this program will deliver substantial benefits on um, reducing those public health impacts. It sounds wonderful, but it's all contingent on, on the passing of legislation, right? Mm -hmm. That's what? right. What are the what are your challenges to getting this passed? Um, it, are there any challenges to getting this passed? And once it is passed, how quick uh, is the turnaround? Mm -hmm. Well, the program, um, the way that it works is by requiring polluters to pay for their pollution, uh, and then taking the money that we get from those payments and reinvesting it in communities for clean transportation options. So as you can imagine, um, the the polluters in this case, um, it, it would be those who sell um, gasoline and diesel fuel at wholesale are the ones that would be required to pay for their pollution um, that they're causing in our state. Um, uh, you know, they are not exactly <laughs> uh, enthusiastic about us having that authority to move forward. So one of the things that we've been running into is um, folks putting out some some myths and, and misinformation about um, what this program would cost for consumers. Um, we do expect that it will have a modest impact on gasoline prices, about five cents, uh, when the program goes into place in 2023, and that will increase to about 10 cents over the next decade. But those consumer impacts are far outweighed by the public health and other economic benefits that will come uh, from being able to finally invest in clean transportation options at the scale that we need to solve the, address the climate crisis and um, improve the health of our kids and our families. And and the goal is to to end our reliance on on gasoline and 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 things like that. Correct. Right. These fuels right. are you know they're really hurting our air quality. Yeah. Um, it's you know sixty six percent of the air pollution um, in our state uh, is coming from our transportation system. And when you see manufacturers like GM saying that they want to be at the forefront of delivering clean vehicles. Um, it's really going to be so important for us to have a program like TCI in place so we can build out charging stations um, and help to accelerate getting those clean vehicles here in our state where we need it um, to uh, help our kids' health. That's excellent. Um, last time you were here, we touched on um, equity and gender efficiency, um, gender, energy efficiency, my bad. <laughs> um, communities of color and low income communities are often, as you mentioned, um, more, they get the end of the stick, correct? Like the bad end of the stick, excuse me, um, in terms of air quality, lead paint. Um, mm -hmm. For the transportation program, New vehicles are expensive. What are some ways that we can make and we can reduce pollution in those communities? And, and yeah. what does your program have in place? I'm so sorry. Well, no, addressing um, addressing environmental justice and equity um, means that we have to do everything that we can, not only to clean up our air, clean up our environment, but do so in a way that make sure that um, our solutions are affordable and accessible um, for you know communities that have been disproportionately impacted um, by uh, pollution and that may you know have more limited incomes and economic challenges um, that they're facing in their daily lives so another place that governor lamont has been showing tremendous leadership on equity and environmental justice um, is with a bill that he's introduced um, to provide for more transparency for renters and um, people purchasing homes about what the cost of heating and cooling 
um, though their new home or apartment will be. You know, when you go to buy a car, um, you know, every car has a label on it that tells you um, what the fuel efficiency is going to be, how many miles per gallon um, you'll get when you drive that car. Um, but when you go to purchase a home or rent an apartment, um, we don't have that same kind of transparency and protection uh, for our for consumers to let them know just how much it might cost on their utility bills if they purchase or live in this in this place. So the governor Lamont has introduced legislation um, that would provide for the first time. Uh, for renters and prospective homeowners um, to get information about the utility costs um, of a property that they're looking at, um, either by getting access to a home energy score, which is a, a label um, that we've developed um, that you can get through our energy efficiency program to, to tell you um, about the energy efficiency uh, benefits of a home, um, or to have access to the last 12 months of utility bills, so you you get a sense of what you're walking into. For lower lower income uh, and working families across the state, um, we know that households who um, make between zero and thirty percent of area median income are spending twenty percent of their income on energy bills. Right. So this is really, really important um, for folks to you know know about um, how much it's going to cost um, to to cool and heat and power um, the place that they're going to live. And by the way, it will um, create a real some some visibility and, and reward and incentive for people for landlords and homeowners who invest in insulation and um, more efficient appliances that they can better market those investments um, for renters and homeowners. That's what we want to see um, going forward. So um, we're excited about models like this um, that demonstrate how we can both solve. Um, for environmental and climate um, challenges in a way um, that uh, helps people um, in their daily lives with more affordable energy costs. And I remember you mentioned uh, the uh, the calculator for energy use um, mm -hmm. last time, so uh, we'll bring that back again. Always um, encourage folks to go check out energizect.com. That's our one-stop shop website where you can get access to all of the ter ter terrific programs that we have available, whether you own your home or whether you rent. Um, there are uh, uh, programs that are available to you where you can learn about things as simple as changing out a light bulb um, to install a more energy efficient LED bulb, you would be shocked at how much that can make a dent um, in our in your energy bill. Um, so those programs um, are for everyone and they're available on our website at energy, uh, energizect.com. Uh, my last question is, should the legislation pass? What What is... Uh, what do you want Connecticut to look like by 2035? Uh, well, I, you know, um, I want us to be seeing our emissions come down really significantly. More uh, bike paths, more um, walkways and, and pedestrian friendly uh, um, options in our cities. Uh, more, uh, the Department of Transportation has already made a commitment um, mm -hmm. that they're not purchasing any more diesel powered buses um, for our transit system. So this program will make a huge difference in them being able to accelerate um, getting those diesel buses off the road um, and having those, you know, emission free uh, electric buses uh, rolling through communities. Um, and I'm excited to see more people uh, purchasing electric vehicles and shifting into those clean transportation options. So, um, but all of that adds up to, you know, cleaner air for our kids. That's, that's why I do what I do. And I know how important that is to families across the state. And uh, so we're excited about this opportunity that we have and, and hope that we'll get this, uh, this legislation passed this, this session. I really hope so too. Thank you so much for joining us and, and for educating us on a topic that we constantly, constantly need to talk about. So thank you very much for joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on the program today. All right. You have a good rest of your day. Thank you. That's all the time we have. Thanks to Commissioner Katie Dykes for joining us this afternoon. Tune in for another episode uh, next week. And don't forget to follow us on all of our social media handles at Twitter at CT Latino News and Instagram at CT underscore Latino News. I'm Savani Campos with CTLN Opinion Plus. See you next time.